This week on Brian Ross Investigates. The Apostles Trial. The leader of an evangelical church with millions of followers now set to go on trial for rape and the sex trafficking of young girls in his congregation. And it still appears as this most be efficient tradition. Most of is denied. A judge in Los Angeles rejects his lawyer's last-ditch effort to get the charges thrown out. They hid it, and they gave us a report in which they altered it, they edited it, and they doctored it. After three years, a day of reckoning is now coming for the man who says he is Christ on earth. Well, I cried, we, we were shaken, we hugged, we celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, a taste of freedom. After 30 years, Crossley Green was released from prison for a murder he says he did not commit. The one good thing I can tell you about my feelings is that there's no hatred. Something happens and, you know, they say a black guy did it and the black guy gets convicted. And this week's winners and losers in the media. See if you agree with the editors of Media. Mr. President, you've said many times that this election was rigged, that there was much fraud. From the studios of the Law and Crime Trial Network in New York City's Herald Square, this is Brian Ross Investments. Good evening, and thank you for joining us, and welcome to our friends on Facebook Live. I'm Brian Ross, and we begin tonight with the Apostles' Trial. A trial date has now been set for the leader of an evangelical church accused of 23 counts of rape and sex trafficking involving underage girls in his own congregation. Asan Joaquin Garcia says he has more than 5 million followers and claims to be Christ on earth. The church has stood by its leader even as the graphic details of his alleged sex crimes have played out in court. This week, a judge in Los Angeles rejected defense arguments to throw out the charges. And our Rhonda Schwartz was in the courtroom as the judge set a trial date for early June. That's right, Brian. A hearing in a Los Angeles courtroom this week has finally brought to an end nearly three years of legal wrangling and delays. The man who's known to millions of followers as the apostle, Nassim Joaquin Garcia, is set to face trial in June. He faces more than 20 counts of child sex abuse involving young members of his own church. Despite claims by the defense team that prosecutors have falsified evidence against their client, an L.A. County judge has ruled the criminal trial will go forward. The prosecution cannot play hide and go see. The prosecution cannot bury a piece of evidence on a shelf in a warehouse they hid it, and they gave us a report in which they altered it, they edited it, and they doctored it. This motion is a last-ditch attempt to avoid a trial in this case. They can't win on the real facts, Your Honor. And it still appears as this motion be efficient. The motion reconsider is denied. If convicted, the man known as the Apostle faces life in prison, but his church continues to stand behind him, says he's been unjustly accused, and the charges should be dismissed, Brian. Thank you, Rhonda. And we're joined now by Sochal Barton, a former member of the church and a survivor of abuse she says began when she was a teenager in the church. Sochal, you more than anyone helped to bring public attention and law enforcement attention to the case of the Apostle. Now that a trial date has been set, what, what's your reaction? Thank you, Brian. Well, first and foremost, my friends and I and thousands of ex-LDM members were ecstatic. Um, me and my friends, we didn't know whether to cry. Well, I cried. We, we were shaken. We hugged. We celebrated. <laughs> um, finally, after almost three years, uh, we're going to have our day in court. <laughs> Uh, the defense tried to argue that you and others uh, exaggerated the innocence of the young women who are alleged to be the victims of the apostle, and that you were doing this all to make money. Now, the judge rejected those arguments. But what do you say about the defense argument? I think it's repulsive of what they are saying of these young women. Uh, they were violated. They were used as, as objects for his sexual pleasure, and the evidence is there, and the truth will come out. 
And the fact that they say that we manipulated, and this is all for money, none of the interviews that I have ever given have been for a penny. I have never asked for a penny. I have, my husband works, he repairs rims, he had his job in politics, and we left all of that to raise awareness on this issue. And the defense is as they're doing their job and they're defending a criminal. So that's all I have to say about that. For you to speak out and to come forward, uh, you've paid a heavy price for that uh, with your own family and with your friends. Has the church tried to come after you in other ways? Many times, many times they've followed us a 24 hour watch in when I was in our when we were in our house in Ensenada. Our friends, we happen to know as well as the families of the Jane Doe's. Uh, we have all in, in one way or another, they have used their tactics. Even in the court, they have their bodyguards outside. They have done a, a, above and beyond to show that they are exactly what we have mentioned in the civil RICO case. They are an, an institution of organized crime. The church uh, continues to support the apostle, and uh, they say he should be released immediately. As best you know, has the church conducted any independent investigation of the allegations against him? It, it breaks my heart, Brian. It, it, yesterday, we couldn't believe that they had the members on a 24-hour prayer, and they, had, they were in the, in, the, in the province, in Guadalajara, Jalisco. They were buying ornaments, and they were up all night and in prayer, 24 hours, and organizing this takes thousands and thousands of dollars in just waiting because they promised them, Brian, that Nathan was going to be released yesterday and that he would be in Guadalajara, Jalisco, and they had the red carpet. They had everything waiting for him to arrive and for them to honor him and shower him with gifts. It's sad. He will be behind bars until the trial, which is now set to begin in June. What will happen to the church if he's convicted of facing a possible life sentence? They already have their next apostle in line. It's Adoraim Joaquin. We all know that. Um, and it's just going to be the same pattern of behavior, and that's the problem. All right, Socho. Well, will you be at the trial yourself? Are you going to attend? I will. I will be attending um, with with our, our friends who have been in this movement and others, uh, we will be there to support and only there to support the Jane and John Doe's. Social Martin, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, Brian. We have repeatedly asked for a representative of the church to appear in our program, but the answer has always been no. The invitation remains open. Up next, a taste of freedom for a man who spent more than 30 years behind bars for a murder he says he did not commit. Now a court may order him back to prison. We have the latest. You're watching Brian Ross Investigates on the Law and Crime Trial Network.